Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Praveen Singh Nompalli and uh, this is an yet another exciting video on the interview series and this will be the fifth video on the interview series guys. So if anyone doesn't know me, uh, this is Praveen here where I'm helping you all to get the job and also I'm running a free DevOps bootcamp for two months which you can check on the link which I have shared here in the description. Each link will have each session's data. So we have completed five sessions guys and we have already entered into the second month of bootcamp and it is running successfully and uh, if you want to connect with me the instagram will be highlighted on the channel singham for devops the registrations are still open go ahead and register yourself to the bootcamp it's free registration but just you will get an access to the telegram group so also one more thing those who want to know about me more how i have generated the success results with my students earlier like five months back you can definitely check out my LinkedIn profile. My LinkedIn profile will be flashing onto the screen. So without delaying much, let's get started into the video of SAP interview question. So yes, welcome back again. So we are today talking about the SAP, the entire process, how many rounds I had, what are the questions they have asked me, uh, whether do we need a DSA or not in this round, uh, how to negotiate the interviewers if something we don't know, if we don't know a question, how to talk confidently, I'll be telling you all those things. So stay tuned to the channel. If you are watching in the phone, watch till the end. If you are watching in the TV, my video, make sure your entire family is sitting and uh, make sure they are also watching that how I am helping you all with my content. Yes. So definitely I'll be telling you how I have applied to the SAP. I have applied to the SAP through the LinkedIn as well as job portal. So every application which I have applied to various organizations, two things you will see common, the LinkedIn and the job portal. So I will be sharing in this document, the job portal link. So definitely check out that. So position selected, I was selected for the position DevOps engineer T2 in SAP guys. Okay. I was selected screening exam. There is no screening exam. So thumbs up for that maybe in the future they will get it but yeah as of now there is no screening exam number of rounds i had six guys six rounds i had and uh, this was very very tough rounds but uh, mostly i have consolidated all the questions and i have made as a three rounds questions for you all to understand i don't want the video to make long because you will get bored i wanted to make the video crisp so i have made all the six rounds questions consolidatedly put together in three rounds okay and i have given the sap portal link also so the portal link will be jobs.sap. Each round duration 60 to 90 minutes. It was one to one and a half hour. So make sure you have enough water and all those things before you are sitting in any interview because the lockdown is still going on. I would request you all to prepare your best and get selected in various organizations of your dream. You want to help your parents. You want to stand on your feet. You want to help others by doing some good things. So make sure you are at least doing some of the things which I have told you. So yes, not wasting the time much. We'll be moving into the round one. So in the round one, it was one and a half hour almost and they have asked me to share the screen. So the first question was write the Groovy script of your entire Jenkins CI CD pipeline. So in my session one, I have already told you how the Jenkins uh, Groovy script look like and uh, I wanted to make sure you also know that how the Groovy script look like and uh, there will be a similar pattern of the Groovy script and uh, make sure you are watching that. If you don't know, you can watch definitely my CI CD session one, which will be flashing onto the screen. So Groovy script, they have asked me to write by sharing the screen. I was able to write a little bit. Yes, but I have completed the entire script here and there. There can be any changes. Uh, I mean, it's not like exactly you have to follow the syntax. You have to follow the entire end to end dot to dot comma to comma not required. You have to tell them that, you know, this skeleton, if given a chance, you can give the best to the team. That's what every interviewer will look in you. Next question, Jenkins design. So we are slowly going into the DSA round. Like everything is mix and match. Guys. So don't worry about that. So Jenkins design and integration with various tools. You have to explain end to end again in the CICD session when I have told you automation done in your projects as a DevOps engineer in session five shell scripting automation. I have told every link will be in the description and it will be flashing onto the screen. Also just check out that if you are able to find it, it will be really good. And I guarantee if you keep those automations in your resume, your resume will be picked up soon and thank me later. So now we will see how to troubleshoot the Linux uh, server if there is a CPU and memory utilization issues and all those things. So you will go into the ETC prop folder where you will find the all the CPU and memory utilization things and you will check like how much is the CPU actually running and utilized. 
if anything any process is taking so much amount of cpu and ram you will kill that process and other things is you will clear the logs and all those things so there is a big amount of process running behind you need to stop all those process you need to make sure your process and threads are very much clear for this troubleshooting to be done what is ansible playbook very much important and show the handlers so handlers and notifiers are the part of the ansible so make sure you know this very very much important what are logical volumes in linux and how to create so basically logical volumes come as a part uh, where you want to uh, segregate or add all the disk together and then separate it as a logical volumes. These logical volumes are very much helpful in managing your disk of the Linux system. So that's why I am telling to you all, go and take the RHCSA certification, which is very much helpful to you guys. Spend amount on yourself. It will give you good deeds in return. So I hope you are able to understand. Uh, what is swap and buffer in Linux? Yes, swap partition is very much important. This swap partition and the buffer partition, as the name it suggests, these are the additional partitions which are added. Uh, like first, let's take a disk is there. Then we have the logical volumes from this. Then we have the swap partitions. Then we have the buffer. So swap and buffer are almost the same. Swap is nothing but it places all the other files which are not needed for your system. Some of the part swap data we can keep it and we can swap it later as and when required. How you change the root password in the Linux system? Yes. These all are questions actually from Red Hat certified Linux system administration. So there is one question also like how you change the root password, which I will be taking in the boot camp later coming sessions okay don't worry about this question but if you want to know uh, like when the when you just power on the linux system when you double click on the linux system to start to boot up you will need to give a command where it will take you to the terminal right other terminal and where uh, there will be some script coming in you need to change the script and you need to change like root password you need to change the amount to volume so this is the process just google it like how to change the root password in the Linux system, you will get the entire details in clear. So uh, how to monitor Linux files for any changes, guys? This was the question asked to me. I seriously don't know this answer. I have to Google it. Uh, so the question was like, he asked me, I still remember. He asked like, okay, Praveen, you have a file. Now someone has changed the file and you want to know what has been changed or you want to know Whenever the file changes, you have to get an alert for yourself. So if you guys are knowing anything such kind of that scenario, comment down in the comment sections that, okay, Praveen, this type of setup we can do and definitely it will help others to know also. Yes, round one is completed and it was really difficult guys because the screen sharing part, I use, I completely filled my notepad. But yeah, even though he was a little bit disappointed because I didn't answer some of the questions. These are like important questions only, not all the questions because my motto is, to help you all to, to make sure that okay this company also resides which gives the good package at the same time these are the questions you all should know for your organization's uh, interview to get clear yes so round two what is change time what is modified time in linux guys with this there is a particular automation which we'll be doing in the shell scripting automation session or if already done the link will be flashing onto the screen so make sure you are watching all the things in clear so c time and m time with this we use some of the commands like, okay, let's take uh, some files are there. You have 10 files stack, okay? And uh, in, in that 10 files, five files have been changed recently. So uh, earlier question in round one, I don't think is matching with this, but yeah, let me tell the scenario. Five files are there, okay? And some files have been changed. So you can find which files have been changed recently. And that is a command like find hyphen M time, uh, like seven days old, five days old, you can use that as the command and you can find like, okay, seven days old, what are the files changed? So these are some automations, real time DevOps automations, which will help you to clear the interviews. Uh, what is nohub and ampersand, right? Are used nohub and ampersand are basically in order to run your process on the background. So if you don't use nohub and you just give java hyphen jar, uh, let's take like Praveen Singham dot jar. This is my YouTube channel name and you, your application is running. Now, the thing is, if you see, con if you press control C, automatically your application will be stopped. So in order to make sure you are doing the work in the background, you give no hub and ampersand and your application will be up and running in the background and you can do anything on the terminal. Getting me? If you have any questions, comment down. I'll reply to each of the comment. I make sure my subscribers are getting the best. So that is what I am trying to do. Uh, how to find the thread dump of the Java applications? We have some commands. Again, uh, I will give in this document. So make sure you are knowing those commands very well. Write a Docker file, right? This one we have discussed in Docker session in session three. So if you are new to the channel, just check out all the things, guys. 
it will really help and motivate your confidence a lot how to write a docker file and copy from a system to the container very very much important and generally asked in all the devops interviews what are exarchs in linux exarchs are additional arguments passed and basically these are something which i will be again giving in the file so trust me i i know what you are thinking in your mind yes i don't know the answers of these questions uh, so i'll be sharing in the document guys so pardon me for that not explaining you all uh, so what are ansible roles and what are advantages very very much important ansible roles are nothing but these are the actual automation things which you will be doing in the real scenario so someone if you they ask okay tell me ansible role tell them yes i have created dev roles test roles and uh, other roles and under the roles there is a folder structure under the folder structures there will be like you will place in one folder let's say five folders are there under the load so this is a role under this there are five folders and one folder will place playbooks one folder variables one folder constants one folder files so those things will be there so definitely check out what are ansible roles round 2 we have completed okay so now uh, for round 3 again this is shell scripting questions have come in soon so make sure you are noting the shell scripting session 5 which is very very much important for you all to face the real time shell scripting scenarios right i hope you are with me if you are with me like the video comment down if you are liking or not any questions comment down i'll definitely answer your questions okay so round 3 write a shell script to separate the number of alphabets uh, numbers alpha numeric characters from a file so this is a shell script i think i will cover it in my shell scripting session if it is already covered that's fine uh, but i will be doing that what are the different grouping of ansible inventory files yes uh, again i don't know that how is port forwarding done in docker yes we use hyphen p container port to the host port we give 80 uh, 80 colon 80 we map the container port let's take this is a container okay and in under this there is a application running so container port to the host port so what let's take host port is 80 container port is 81 so what we do 81 is to 80 now what happens let's take www. pravin singampalli colon 80 if someone has hit 80 it will come here then it will come inside the application getting me uh, what is docker compose in different types of docker networks yes docker networks i have already told everyone and i think in session 4 people have actively responded how many types of networks are there in docker so if you know comment down uh, the answer for that i'll be eagerly waiting for your replies guys okay and uh, what is container life cycle this also i have told you exited state running state uh, pause state right and uh, i think start state these are some five states four to five states in a container so make sure you are knowing that also what is ansible playbook to deploy an application and check whether the app url is up or not yes ansible playbook is very important guys for you all to know there are some modules which you need to prefer to watch those so get url line in fact module right which where you use regexs and change the data and uh, there are some other module shell module where you do the shell commands execution on the server and whether the url is up or not you use something like shell only let's check curl if that is matching with 200 yes that url is up if that is matching with some other internal server error or uh, 404 not not found then it means the url is not up there is other ansible modules which you can help uh, get help from definitely check out those this is only to give an high level what is being asked in the interviews so make sure you are following all the questions the document will be shared in the description below all the session links will be shared in the description below so just check out all the things and if you are liking the content like the video subscribe to the channel if you are new follow me on instagram singam for devops follow me on linkedin where i am actively sharing all the content related to devops and uh, trust me guys believe in me i i believe you i trust you so same have faith in me and uh, aise hi saath padhenge aage badhenge aur mehnat karenge guys with that said part fifth interview series part is completed from my end from your end you need to watch out for the next part as well as get ready for the next sessions on the boot camp with that said sap interview experience is completed and uh, i am pravin singampalli signing off from today's session take care bye